So it's finally arrived guys. This is the package from Mauser in the UK with my TPS65988 DJ replacement PD controller. So as you can see, it comes in a nice little package here. There was a box and then they have this inside it and they're not happy with that. So they have another anti-static bag inside it as well and this to remove any moisture. It's very, very professionally done. Um, we don't normally buy from the UK here because there's issues with customs packages getting stopped and having to pay customs to get it through since they left the eu but i had no choice but to buy from this place because i couldn't find that ic anywhere else however i'm very impressed with you know the packaging and how quickly they got it to me uh, i've no affiliation with mouser if it was terrible i would say it was terrible but it was actually a very good service so i might buy some other components from them if i can't find them anywhere else so let's take it out of bag and try and put it onto the board so I put some flux on the board and dropped in my new TPS 65988. I set my hot air station to 400 degrees Celsius and I started circling around all of the pads as you can see here. This is actually very difficult to do on my cheap USB camera. I wasn't able to heat it evenly like this because I kept hitting the hot air station off the camera. So what I eventually ended up doing was pulling it out from underneath the camera, just circling around it while holding it down with the tweezers and I eventually got it into place. Now I don't solder in these types of ICs every day, it's really just what you see me doing on the channel. So I find that it's better for me to check all of the connections afterwards. So what you'll see me doing here is checking the four sides of this IC with my microscope. You can ignore that red wire, it's just a jumper I was using. I get rid of that before doing any further work. So as you can see, when I focus in on each of the pins of the IC, I want to make sure that it's making a proper solder connection to the pad on the board. So that's two sides checked, that looks okay. So the third side, you know, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. And then lastly, on the fourth side, just want to try and get focus. And it looks okay. Well, it's the best I can do with the equipment I have anyway. So now it looks like the chip is soldered incorrectly. Let's plug it in and see what voltages we get. Now you might remember from the previous part of the video that when I measured at VBUS 1, which is pins 13 and 14, I was measuring 5.1 volts here and I had deduced that that was wrong. I thought that the PD controller should have negotiated with my Dell power adapter and I should be seeing 20 volts here. So with it plugged in now, having swapped out this IC, I wanted to check and see what the voltage on VBUS 1 was now. So with my multimeter in volts DC, I place my black probe to ground and place my red probe to this capacitor right here which connects to pins 13 and 14 and what I measured was 20.12 volts. So now it looks like the PD controller has successfully negotiated with my Dell charger and we are getting the correct voltage at VBUS 1. So we verified that we have the correct voltage on pin 13 and pin 14, which are our VBUS 1, the connection from our USB-C. But is there anything else we can check on this to let us know that the chip is actually functioning correctly? Well, you might remember from the last part of this video, I noticed that on pin 9, there was an LDO 3.3 volts, which is internally generated in this IC. So if this IC gets the correct input voltage, it should always produce this. There is also a 1.8 volts LDO on pin 35. However, this is produced from this 3.3 volts. So I guess it's the case that if the 3.3 volts is working then this one will be working as well. But what I wanted to measure was just to see if this is now present using the new TPS 65988. So with my black probe to ground again I placed my red probe to this capacitor right here and I found that it measured 3.36 volts. So it seems like our LDO voltage is also present now. And just one last thing I wanted to check before plugging it in and trying to power it on. I wanted to check the voltage on the current sense resistor right here that sits between the USB PD controller and our battery management IC. So once again, with my black probe connected to ground and my multimeter in volts DC, I place my probe to this current sense resistor and it measures 20.12 volts. So that all looks good. So I think the only thing I can do now is press the power button and see what happens. 
So after replacing the PD controller, I'm gonna now try and power it on again. So I have my Dell USB-C adapter. And as you may remember from the first part of the video, I pulled off one of the USB-C ports because it was just hanging off when I got it. So I'm gonna plug into the one that's left. So plug it in, the light has stayed on anyway, so that's good. So I wanna press the power button, which is over here. So I'm pressing the power button. Okay, so we've got a light and we've got backlight. Couldn't be, could it? Because we've got a solid light down here. We've got backlight, but um, I'll just give it a second. Okay. Oh, okay, what's going on here? No, oh, no. Three, four, five, six. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, amber. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we're not out of the woods yet. Let me check and see what that is. I found a service manual for my Latitude 7310. I've come down to the diagnostic section. I can see my LED codes here. So what we were looking at was three comma six. So let's scroll down and find that. And here we go. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so 3.6 is system bias flash incomplete. Oh, and a suggested solution. Of course, replace the whole motherboard. Um, well, we won't be doing that for sure. Um, so system bias flash incomplete. Okay, let's see if we can find the bias chips on this. Back to our motherboard once again. I'm looking for my system bias IC to see if it's a particular package type that I, you know, that my programmer can interface with and I might be able to program it. Um, I found these two ICs right here. These look like BIOS ICs. Um, it's 25Q8OCSIG, I think. Um, but what's curious here is we have two that are exactly the same. Now, I think these might be the EC BIOS because I think that this is the startup I see right here. Across the board, we see that there's another one, which is this one right here. This is XMCQH256BXIQ. So I think this might be the system bias. Like, is it always the case that when they refer to this here, system bias flashing complete, that obviously refers to the system bias and not the EC bias, I presume. But either way, I need to find out for sure which one of these is the one that is causing our laptop to give our three amber six white and see if I can find a ROM online, take it off, reprogram it, hopefully put it back on and get this laptop back working again. Because unlike most of the laptops I deal with here, which I think we can all agree with, there's a lot of rubbish I get because they're all old laptops. This one's actually quite nice and I would actually use this if I could get it working again. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and find out which one of these that uh, 3 comma 6 diagnostic light refers to see if I can find a ROM and then there's going to be a part 3 if you know any more on this or you think you can help me out with it please post down in the comments below thanks